The hunt is on. Without iced tea. Welcome to IP Suffer. <laughs> that's that's actually Every- in the tagline too. Yeah. yeah. They, they make sure you Everyone know this isn't was- surviving the game. Everyone was very parched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No lemonade, no Arnold Palmer's it's fucking bad time Nothing. out in the woods. This is episode 227 of IP Suffer. My name is... This movie was bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's also my name. His name is my name, um, too. His name is my name, too, but with a junior on it. Because I'm junior. <laughs> um, let's talk about Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Let's instead. talk about the movie Junior. For that. I'm down for either. <laughs> um, this week, Kit did us dirty. <laughs> Picked uh, a movie called Skull Forest from 2012. That is um, the worst version of surviving the game I've ever seen, or the most dangerous game. Yeah. Where, for I... some reason, it is shot completely at an angle. And shaky on purpose, and it's called on art. Spaces. Yeah. Okay, I feel like the like the it's director having a vision. saw like <laughs> one shot in a movie that was of that like weird tilted angle, and was like, "I'm gonna make an entire movie like this." <laughs> Amazing, maybe, I love it. Maybe his this head is, is my tilted. personality. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's gotta, fair. I think we're. I think we figured it out. Great job, everybody. Um, yeah, this was. A movie that I'm not happy I watched. Don't worry. There's more where this one came from. I... Man. I think (laughs) this is the new low for me. This is the new worst (laughs) movie we've watched for the podcast for me, I think. Well, we've still got Swamp Zombies and Curse of the Wolf and Fist of the Vampire. This is the thing, though. Swamp Zombies has the blue meanie in it. So already <laughs> you're like you're starting in a positive. Um, bound, a Wendigo bound for blood, at least has a Wendigo in it. This just had a dude wearing a contact lens that looks so he could look kind of like Marilyn Manson. <laughs> One contact lens for some reason, and of course he was like trying to be Australian and or New Zealand or something. Like, as soon as he spoke, I was like, of course he would have that accent. I got, I have a lot of questions about a lot of decisions in this movie, but the one I have the most of is the, um, I'm assuming white women playing Native Americans that are also speaking Russian. Yeah. Yeah. Baffling. This is a baffling movie. (laughs) Yeah. Um, this might also be the least amount of notes I have because it's, nothing happens really except like people are walking through the woods. It's it's so. literally like if you've seen any version of the most dangerous game, you've seen this movie. And you've just you've seen better. you've seen better versions of it. <laughs> Fist of the Zombie yeah. though, or Fist of the Vampire. Looks great. Also has the blue meanie in it. <laughs> apparently, exactly. <laughs> apparently, that's his go-to. Um, yeah, I'm done. This is the end. Well, the last episode. We're never. The <laughs> <laughs> we finally did it. <laughs> Our oh, work Blue is Beanie's concluded. In, like, at least four of these movies he's done. Wow. He's trying to get his career off the ground. Oh man. How is it like everything except Fist of the Vampires on Tubi? Yeah, I was wondering that. I was very upset. Rude. Come on, Tubi. Uh, <laughs> someone, someone upload a VHS rip of it or something. I love when, like, on Letterboxd, when you like click on like the plot and it's 
fucking like eight paragraphs for some reason instead of just like a brief breakdown so you could just basically find out the entire movie <laughs> it's like the whole script and it's always some like weird low budget shit that like barely has a plot <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, like Vampire Assassin, where they gave you, like, you almost had to read, like, the letterboxed plot to even know what was going on. <laughs> that, like, gave you context for the. Sense. You know what? At least that movie was so. Like, at least there were moments in that where it was, like, funny and there was, like, a little bit of a reprieve. There was nothing remotely funny in this movie at all. Disagree. Like, All of the blood effects were extremely sick. I, you know, I was mm. like the, like it's not like the makeup's not good, but like I can bypass that shit because like I love, I especially like like I've talked about it on here before. Like I used to be way into like I would buy anything with the Troma logo on it, and most of it was about the quality of this. So like I can get around like extremely cheap looking like special effects and like this in this movie they didn't like really bother me it was just like the fucking angle angle of every shot drove me fucking crazy like the acting is obviously not good because it's just these aren't actors like yeah. like <laughs> the story was actors. just fucking boring there was just like a, a like ridiculous amount of like nudity for no reason. Yeah. That like well, that's not true. There was nudity for the sake of nudity. Yeah, there was just yeah. I know when I'm <laughs> out sleeping in the woods on the ground, not in a tent, I always take my top off. So you gotta yeah. become one with nature. I don't know. Just like yeah. I don't like I don't know if it was because I was dealing with the fact that like no one's getting text messages from me now and was trying to figure that out while I was trying to watch this and I was just like I was so fucking aggravated <laughs> watching this movie <laughs> is this this was like, this was a rough bored. one for me it was uh, I was not dealing with it except for you being like did you get my text did you get my text and I was like no <laughs> Uh, I just found it extremely boring. I actually had like a really hard time paying attention to it. And I was just like on my phone, which I normally don't do. Like normally, even if it's really bad, I'm like, I have to push through to do the notes. But this was like so bad. I just was like on TikTok also. And I, <laughs> I, I don't feel like I missed anything to be very fair. We'll find out. All right. I don't have that much notes. I literally have a page and a half, which is the shortest notes ever. Yeah, this is burned through it. Like when we did Tsunami so, and Kit and I just burned through it in like 15 minutes. And we're like, let's talk about anything else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we can do it. So I've got Hooch movie... snoring in the background. We can just have him snore yeah. for a little while. I'll let Xerxes in Good. here to yell for a little bit. Just <laughs> yeah. so Xerxes and Hooch could take over. Horrible. Horrible animal Hello. sound ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so this movie starts with a quote from the most dangerous game or whatever the fuck um, that says, life is for the strong, to be lived by the strong. The weak of the world were put here to give the strong pleasure. I am strong. Why should I not use my gift? If I wish to hunt, why should I not? Excuse me. Calm down, sir. <laughs> I think that every never mind. I don't need to get into men uh, at this point. <laughs> so I'm just gonna move on. Um, essentially, it starts uh, off how a lot of our movies start, which is a dude running through the woods uh, wearing camo, and he gets shot in the head. Um, for some reason, the scene takes a really long time. All of the scenes take That's a very all, long time. I was gonna say there. You just it's every, every scene. scene. Yeah, so anytime I say a sentence, imagine that's 15 minutes. Um, then there's the title and the credits. I don't know who... Uh, it starts with basically we're being introduced to these women, and I don't know who anyone's name was. I called them what their profession is, except for uh, Sarah, who was just, like, passed out. I'm not going to lie, I didn't realize anyone in this so, movie had a name. Yeah, same. Um, I don't think I heard a single name in the whole film. She's... She's the only one I knew. Uh, she was also insufferable. I Again, could, I, that was everybody in this movie. I know. I know. So, like, essentially, we get uh, introduced to Mom, 
uh, who uh, comes home with her kids, and I assume her mother is basically just like, go, have a good time. Like, you haven't been out at the house for two years since Gary died or whoever the fuck her husband was. And so she's like, okay, mom, I will. And she leaves. She calls um, her, her squad together. And um, she calls her the first lady, whose name is Lawyer, I assume. I don't know. It's a good name. And then, yeah, she, she basically Burn. just like... <laughs> that's, some, like <laughs> that's some shit that like I would not be surprised to see pop up on her Twitter name. from some like weird blonde white mom that's just oh, like 100%. lawyer l-a-u-y-e-a-u-w-r or some shit yeah yes like literally yeah there's definitely at least five children in the world right now named lawyer oh shit um you guys want to hear some good news no all right never mind no okay <laughs> my severin, my severin my package shit. of bruno matai movies shipped yay i'm gonna watch some fucking <laughs> Shit in the jungle get blown up. Can't wait. We're just um, talking about your tracking number for an hour. Yeah, I'll just read out the <laughs> tracking number, my credit card number. Okay. What's your social? What's for your social? I literally was just a second was gonna be like, well. <laughs> um. I'm glad you okay. asked. Mom calls her friend lawyer and says, "I'm gonna pick you up in an hour. Be there." <laughs> Uh, then she calls Sarah, who is a woman who is just passed out on her on her bed and appears to have a hangover. And then they also call um, their last friend, who I am calling cop, because she's a cop. And then the girls, again, like Nathan said, a lot of nudity. Sarah is just, like, naked on her bed. And then we get a montage of all of the girls like, getting ready to go to a camping trip and the, just like taking their clothes off, but it happens for like fifteen minutes. And I was like, I, I, you know right. what? At least they're in their house, as opposed to like laying around on the fucking grounds of just these woods. Like I'm, the, it's I didn't even like the nudity didn't bother me from like a prude standpoint. It bothered me from the fact that they're like just randomly like. <laughs> Oh God, we're running away in from these people. Wood? Better take my top off and lay down in the fucking dirt and sticks. Like, well, you see naked bodies they... in the woods all the time. Makes sense. No. I don't because I don't go. I don't leave my house except for work. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you went in the, the woods, only, you'd know. The the only thing I can think of is how awkward that would be to be just filming this in someone's backyard woods in the daytime, just being like naked for no reason. I was like, this is so awkward you know they kept it together though they have, were dedicated to their craft uh yeah they get ready for like 10 minutes then there's some kind of banquet happening where there's like music playing people are dancing and then a guy gives a speech and then we are for some reason introduced to all of the people that are spoiler alert part of the human hunting club like <coughs> Seems like a bad name if you're trying to hide this original name. <laughs> so <laughs> that's right. It's like baffling to me because like we know what's happening in this movie because we knew we knew what it was, right? But they're but they but they don't tell us what's happening. And so the guy just starts reading cards that has people's names, which don't matter at all. And also their accolades. Like what makes them a good hunter? I guess like someone was in the military. Somebody is a gymnast or some shit and it goes on for so long there's like five or six of these like hunters and it's just like why is this happening i don't know so basically he just like reads about all these people i don't know anyone's names i didn't write anyone's names down it doesn't matter but then they just like go back to dancing immediately after he reads the very last person's like page <laughs> and then everyone just gets up and starts dancing again and i was like what the fuck is going on here um okay so the group of women on their little girly trip arrive somewhere i don't know they're gonna hike into the woods though which seems like a bad idea um and they're all there's like a montage of them setting up camp but they're all very bad at what they're doing and Sarah just sits there and drinks a water bottle the whole time while people are like cutting wood and shit. 
Um, then that night, there is a uh, scene of them roasting marshmallows and drinking some bud around the fire. There's no sound, though. Like, it's supposed to be a montage of them, like, talking and having fun, but there's no sound. It was very strange. Yeah, you don't need sound. And then they just... I mean, I can imagine what's happening here. Um, and then they just basically complain about their lives. Like, they hate their job, they hate their kids, you know, whatever, Same. as you do. I hate my kids. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, in the morning, they are all... You know, in my mind, I was thinking, I don't understand how this, like, group of like normal people who are just trying to hike could like fight back or stand up to people who are hunting humans at all. But the first thing that they do when they wake up is take full on baths in the river. And that really takes some courage. I would not be, do you would not be catching me doing that. So yeah, I want to know where this was shot because I can guarantee you whatever it is in the U S that river is not clean. No. And they're, like, I'm not talking like they're splashing water on their faces. They're, like, naked, it fully submerged in the water, like, taking full-on baths with, like, their loofahs and shit. So, that's how you get a shark bite that's, your... That's what I'm saying. Vagina, I guess. Well, yeah. I was going to say. Oh, this was filmed in get... Pennsylvania. That that place was definitely filthy. Let's say you're one of those wiener yeah. fish. <laughs> Don't want that. Yeah, it's, well, either or. You this know? is. I think they'll, this is just the prequel to Dick Shark. Yeah, they'll figure it out. There's places to go. Um. Anyways, then they are laughing because one of the women is like getting dressed, and I, one of the other ladies is taking pictures of her, and she's like, "Don't post us online. I have enough stalkers as it is." And I was like, "What is this?" I. I don't understand how this movie has six trivia items on IMDb when there's like big movies we've covered that have like two. I don't know. How does it have any? What the are the entire they? ballroom sequence was shot in two hours? Not a shocker um, to me. Actor Luke two. Bernier speaks French throughout the film. Great. Helpful. <laughs> yep. And then the rest of these are no like idea. fucking two paragraphs long. <laughs> Wow. A lot of dialogue from a variety of villains was cut from the film. The Kobazinski brothers decided it fit the film better to have these characters more mysterious killers in the forest environment than having them be defined characters. A couple okay. scenes were then why did we have to what? Why did we have to get introduced to them for like 15 minutes then if you want them to be background characters? Also, like, this isn't trivia. This is just like, hey, we edited it. Yeah, this is just, just this so is you know, we stuff actually, that happened in the film. We actually edited this movie. <laughs> did you know someone yeah. spoke French in the movie? Yeah. They, I watched it. I, I did because it says speaks French. So. This had yeah. to have been like trivia added by the directors because there's shit that's like scenes that were cut from the script like before filming and it's like literally no one else would have knowledge of that other than the people making this movie no one's read this script right uh oh yeah okay so they're taking un unsolicited pictures of this woman sarah and then suddenly somebody is grabbed from behind who has a gun and spoiler he's speaking french Oh, hold on a second. I think I think I found a trivia that's actually uh, important. Okay. Actor Bud Crandall, who appears in the opening sequence, is also known as professional wrestler Bennett Cole. Bennett Cole has been the Lake Erie Championship title holder multiple times for the PWR, Pro Rampage Wrestling Federation, in addition to wrestling at several other promotions all over the U.S. Wow. Was he the guy that was running through the woods? I don't know. I don't remember the opening sequence of this movie. That was the <laughs> opening scene with somebody getting shot. I literally don't remember anything except um, the scalping. I don't even remember a scalping. Yeah, I don't remember that at all. Uh, the two fake <laughs> Native American characters kill one of like kill you know the one the woman. See, I don't remember that either. The woman that's like kind I didn't of pay a lot of attention starts like taking charge and is like taking dudes out that then like shockingly you know quote unquote shockingly gets killed. Um, uh, 
Okay. Yeah, like, I don't know. Whoever, like, the, the blonde <laughs> woman is who's, like, actually kind of, like, seems competent in, like, fighting the against them for a minute. And then, like, she gets... Probably the cop. She, yeah, I oh, guess. Maybe I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't I, matter. One knows. of the women in this <laughs> gets competent and starts killing some of the dudes. And then gets, like, killed by these two Native American women. And they scalp her. And it's the only... T- I don't know. It's, and then that's when they start speaking Russian. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? Dang. I missed the scalping. See? You really did. Okay, it's so... Fucking, I, it's terrible. This movie's terrible. <laughs> So she gets grabbed from behind by a guy speaking French. Then the cop, uh, she was still bathing. So she sneaks up on him and then pulls a gun on him yes. and then handcuffs him. And then Sarah is throwing up. I wrote LOL, so I guess I thought that was funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I like you revisiting this the- movie through your text and being like, well, I guess I laughed here. I don't. I mean, I I wrote it so. <laughs> um. They pack up all of their stuff, and um, the lawyer had brought her phone with her, and so they want to call for help, but they don't have signal. So they pack up all their stuff. They bring the French guy with them, and they're gonna keep walking until they can get reception on the phone. So they're walking, whatever. Then they get to a point where they're like, okay, we're gonna. The lawyer and the cop decide that they're gonna go and um try to like climb up a mountain or some shit and get signal and so they leave mom the gun so sarah and mom and the french guy are left then they're like chilling and then somebody shoots so they like handcuff the french guy to a a tree i just like that he's listed as the foreigner in the cast yeah (laughs) great (laughs) yep someone shoots his handcuffs off so he gets up and he's like, run, run, you have to run. And they're just like, don't get near me. Oh. And then he gets shot. He gets sniped by the guy we were talking. I called him the music guy because he um, he's the one with like the one contact and the Australian maybe accent. Uh, because I remember in his accolades, one of them was that he was like a studio producer or something. And I was like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? So he's the music guy. Someone's um, someone's review on Letterbox just says, I could tape a GoPro to a rabid dog and get better camera work than whatever this shit is. Agree. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree. It's, I, like, I don't know, this... The, yeah, I, I, I want to complain about the camera work the entire time of this movie, because it's brutal. It is. It's like, you said, like you said, it's on an angle, and then they also do this thing where they, like, shake it on purpose. And I'm like, this is, like, giving me motion sickness. Yeah, it's like, uh, like I, I understand shit like that for, like, Blair Witch or something, but, yeah. like, it makes no sense for this movie. This is movie. a found footage movie, in case you didn't know. I think the dude's just literally stumbling over fucking sticks and holes in the ground the entire time he's I'm, filming. I don't, yeah, I think so. Um, so, yes. So the French guy gets sniped by the music guy, and then the girls are like, "Ah, oh my god!" And then they start running through the woods. Uh, they're having a terrible time of it. They can't. They can't be. They can't do run through any branches or anything. They're having a hard time. Then the whole hunter, human hunter club people, uh, con- con- congregate and decide that they should kill the girls. So, like, essentially, they were just doing the most dangerous game in the woods, and they happened to be near these women. And because they saw one guy get shot, they decide they need to kill them. And I was just like, for what? They don't know what's going on. It doesn't fucking end. Anyways, whatever. (laughs) The cop and the lawyer come back to the camp site and find the French guy is dead, and they're like, well, that's not great. Uh... And the cop automatically knows that that gun that the mom had was not the one that killed the guy. So they're just like, oh, no, we have to find them. Um, but as they're there, so another one of the hunter guys, like, sneaks up on Sarah and grabs her or whatever. But, the, but then Ma, the mom stabs him in the back with a machete. And then she's like... I don't know. We get first person view of her like looking through a rifle sight for some reason. Uh, because then a 
like forest ranger shows up and it's just like hey what the hell's going on here then the lawyer and the cop decide that they're going to pack up just some of their stuff so that they can go in the woods and like look for the two girls that are missing and then the cop says throw in some extra water for me i'm gonna stay positive and i was like what does that mean <laughs> like question. maybe water for the other women if they find them i don't know i just at the time was like what uh then there's a scene of the clouds moving really fast like you know like time's passing i guess uh then someone throws a knife at sarah and it misses her and hits the tree and then they're like ah and they run and then <laughs> The cop is like, I'm going to, I don't know what happened, but basically <laughs> she, she lets the lawyer like get away and is going to like I, stay I there. Just, and... I just, hold on. I just want it stated that Katie and I both watched this movie seven hours ago, maybe at, yeah. at the most. And like, yeah. you could barely tell even with your notes what happened. I can't remember any of this. <laughs> Like, that's how fucking forgettable this movie was. That, like, <laughs> even, like, with your notes, you're like, I don't know what the fuck this is. <laughs> yeah. Because it's just, like, a basically, like, the people in the woods, and then they, like, encounter each other. And, like, that's essentially the whole movie. So the cop is basically like, oh, I'm going to stay here and fight this guy face to face. You run away. And so the lawyer runs. And then the cop maces him but it's like literally a bottle of like spray that you put on your face it's like makeup setting spray so she's just like spraying water in his face and he's like ah, 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 you know and then she shoots him and he's dead um one of the trackers who is the woman that is speaking russian for some reason is like following her around or whatever and the lawyer shakes her off because she holds her breath and gets in the river. She's clever. Clever girl. So... Don't, don't try to bring a good movie into this. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Sarah, and the ranger go back to the ranger station because they're going to, you know, they've told the ranger, like, what happened, and he's like, okay, I'm going to call, like, the real cops or whatever. So they get there. The mom, oh, we find out there's a nurse, so I guess I should be calling her nurse, but whatever. Uh, give Sarah first aid because her knee is cut up for some reason, and then the hunters show up, and they basically are like, I don't know what these bitches are talking about. They're the ones that killed our friend, and then Sarah starts freaking out and is like, no, you're lying. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. Um, and then the ranger just shoots and kills the both of the girls, supposedly. And then you're like, wow, plot twist. The, the ranger's in on it. Then you hate they, to see it. I mean, you do, but it's not surprising. Then for some reason, they cut their clothes off. The, the hunters cut the women's clothes off and burn the clothes. And then bury them in the ground. Um, Not weird at all. No, totally normal. Then, uh, meanwhile, the cop is interrogating some guy that she got a hold of and is basically just like, how many hunters are there? How many? How many? And then, instead of just telling her, because literally there's no consequences to what's happening for him, he uh, drinks some poison and kills himself, which... Seems really dramatic for the situation. Big mood. Say what? Big mood. Oh yeah, I mean, but like, I just don't. I don't know. He had he had plugs, so you know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, uh, mom. Oh, well, there's a scene of her. She's not dead. She digs herself out of her grave. Um. I don't really know. This was baffling to me. Yeah, because like the the ranger shot her a few times. Like I, so I, again, like it was a thing where I think like 
pretty soon after this is when I really stopped paying attention. And so I was just like, oh, okay, well, they, I guess, reanimated her? I wasn't sure what was going on. I was like, is this going to turn into, like, a the crow? No, I think she... No, right? I think she just didn't die. That's, she just was, like, unconscious, and they didn't check, and then they just threw her in their grave. so much worse. <laughs> yeah. She took a literal dirt nap because she just took a little nappy, and then she got up. You know, she, she was fine. Um, so she wanders around for a while, finds the ranger station, and, like, eats a bunch of food and then puts some clothes on, and then goes back out into the woods with a knife. Oh, in the burn pile where they, like, burnt her clothes and shit, they, she finds a picture of her, of what I assume are her children. And she's like, Ugh. So, meanwhile, the hunters that are left talk about how good they are at killing and, like, why they're good at killing and hunting and stuff. And one of the guys gets really mad because the music guy is smoking a cigarette and he's like, I'll never give away my position. He doesn't have an accent, but, you know. Might as well. Why not? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know why not. Um, Surely it's on IMDb. There has to be an explanation. Yeah, figure figure that out. So then, uh, meanwhile, the cop and the lawyer trick one of the guys into uh, coming up close, essentially, and they end up killing him and stealing his gun and taking his knife. Like, these hunters aren't very good. They're pretty bad, if you ask me. <laughs> um, another hunter shows up and distracts the cops so she gets bow and arrowed apparently and i'm a, i guess she dies too yeah. yeah this is this this is what i was talking about where like she's the one that's kind of like actually taking people out and then like they have the twist where these two women just like kill her and then they scalp her here yeah yeah i missed the scalping uh well she's dead so mom and lawyer are the only two that are left now. They are separated, uh, but they find each other pretty easily. And then they look up and see a pedestrian bridge. And there's like some pedestrians on the bridge while they were filming this, which I thought was pretty funny uh, because you see people walking on it. And I was like, why don't they yell for help? And then I was like, oh, they're not supposed to be there. <laughs> it's just like a random shot in the movie. Um. Uh, and then they're basically, like, about to, like, go to the bridge, but the lawyer gets shot in the head, and mom runs. So the two women hunters um, all of a sudden are fighting each other for some reason, and uh, they fight for a long time, and then they end up killing each other. So that's that. I don't, I don't remember any of this at this point. This is all new, yeah, new they, information like, to me. So I think, like, they were fighting because um, whoever ended up killing the cop, the other, the Russian girl was like, you stole my kill. I'm going to get you for this. But it's like the scenes are removed from each other. So then when they started fighting, I was like, why is this happening? So they just fight. Do they, like, explain anything about who these women are? Or, like, is this just, like, another no, group of just... people that's hunting? No. I... They're just part of the are they... just hunters, I guess. Oh, are they? I just assumed this was, like, a whole separate fucking thing that just starts happening. Um, You know what? Actually, I don't remember because when they were, like, introducing the hunters at that banquet, I kind of tuned out because it was going on for so long. So I don't actually remember, but I'm pretty sure that they are part of the group because I remember specifically one of them being a woman who was like a Olympic gymnast or something. And I was like, what does that have to do with anything? That's weird. What a bad movie. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. We're like literally almost done. So the women both end up killing each other. The hunters that are left decide to double the bet for who can kill mom. Um, and the one guy says, school is still in session, and your lesson is, I always get the girl, or something like that. And I was like, what? So, mom immediately sneaks up on the music guy, who is, like, pretending, he's, like, on the floor, like, he's, like, tracking her or something, and she just walks up behind him and hatchets his hand off, and then 
cuts his neck open. And I was like, again, so shitty. She literally just walks up right behind him and cuts his hand off. And then he's like, ah, like screaming and shit. And then he dies. And I was like, all right. Mom goes back to the ranger station. Then there's like this whole like, oh, she fights with the ranger in there and then she kills him also. And then the last hunter guy is, is like, shows up with a gun and essentially is just like, wow, you're really great. You're a dangerous woman. I like it. And he throws all of his weapons away except for maybe he has a knife. I can't remember. But essentially he's like, um, he's like, she, she basically is just like, what's going on here? Like, what's the deal with all of this? And he was just like, I would tell you, but then I would have to kill you. And I was like, that's the fucking point. What are you talking about? You're gonna trying to kill her anyway, stupid. That guy, um, uh, that guy's the director, by the way. Terrible, awful, terrible and awful. <laughs> I try not to target people, but come on. Anyways, he's basically just like, I like your spunk. You killed a bunch of people. Let's fight. So then they're gonna like wrestle, or the, the, he like throws away his guns and shit. And he's going to, like, even the playing field. But then he's, like, doing martial arts on her and, like, throwing her around and shit. And it's, like, very obvious that she doesn't know what she's doing. She's just, you know, she's not trained at all. Uh, But then he gets her on the ground and he's about to, like, stab her. And she throws some pocket dirt in his eyes. And he's like, ah, I didn't see that coming. And then she gets up and runs into the station (laughs) <laughs> then he like, I re- I'm, just, I'm just going to pretend he actually says I didn't see that coming <laughs> he should have honestly um, and then he like tracks her basically then she uh, ends up knocking him out with a shovel I think and then she buries him in the woods the way he buried her and then um, the last like 15 minutes of the movie is her like Somehow walking from the woods to her front door. Somehow. And then it's the end. Yeah. They, uh, they just, the whole, the, the Shyamalan twist at the end of this movie is that the woods are right across the street from her house the whole time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right in her the own woods. backyard. God damn. Yeah. Say the woods were her yard. Her <laughs> yeah. living room, even. The, were, the, the woods were, <laughs> were in her living room all along. Uh, and I think that's the fastest we've ever covered a movie. So yeah, this, here this we are. Garbage. <laughs> You're welcome. I'll still watch the vampire one at some point if it ever hits free. I refuse. Least, I refuse to rent it. <laughs> no, that at least has the capability of being funny in some way. There was just like no aspect of this that was funny because it was like just based in reality. You know, like I don't know. In forestry, bad. yeah. Is bad and you should feel bad about it. <laughs> uh, all right. Any news? I forgot. Um, <laughs> Corey Taylor has <laughs> bought the rights to the famous monsters brand. Who? Who? What? Start over. Corey Taylor from Slipknot now owns the rights <gasps> to famous monsters. Why? Who let him do that? People that wanted money. Sure. Uh, Sasha, <laughs> Sasha Bear Conan rumored to be playing. Uh, Mephisto, an upcoming Marvel TV series. Okay. Oh, shit. Filming now officially underway for The Nun 2. Oh, thank God. I was worried about that. <laughs> um, let's see. This is just reviews. That's a meme. Don't care about that. Uh, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla coming to U.S. theaters for the very first time in November. Yeah. That's pretty Ooh. sick. They're turning their Wicker Man into a TV series. Yeah, I saw that too. Like, what the fuck? There was something else that they're doing. Oh, like, no. Fuck, what was the other thing? Oh, they're turning the fucking, like, I think 1996 is the year Fear came out into a fucking TV series. The Mark Wahlberg, right. Reese, like, Weiss Witherspoon fucking statutory rape movie. <laughs> Great. That's what we need more it's of. It's Wisp. Wisp Sugar Spoon is her name. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Brendan Fraser open to a mummy four. Great. I love to hear it. John Carpenter still eager to direct a dead space movie. Let's do it, homie. 
I'd, I'd hesitantly watch that. <laughs> I'll always watch a John Carpenter movie, but after the ward, I don't know, maybe just stay retired. Yeah, maybe agree with that. Uh, this Megan movie. <gasps> oh my god. I, I am flabbergasted by this. So the first thing, if you, for some reason, have not seen anything about Megan, it is about a doll like a human size like doll, but it's like an AI doll who I assume kills people. And the very, very first scene that I saw of it was a clip and I saw it. I was having, I don't know. I assume it, it is what taking LSD is like when I first saw this, because I had like an out of body experience. When I saw the clip, the clip was of the doll doing like a the dance. dance. And then running on all fours at somebody, and I was like, what in the absolute nightmare fuel is this? But it looks so weird. Yeah, I, I can't, like I'm like, I'm like, I do I like don't... that there was like a a Twitter back and forth between the, the account for that and the Chucky TV series account. <laughs> where Chucky was like, everybody's really? always imitating me, and then they just had like some back and forth for like a day. I love it. I think it looks so absolutely ridiculous in not a good way that I want to see it. I mean, and I a, think that's, that's the type the of point. thing that, like, if it hits, like, Hulu or some shit, I'll watch. But I'm definitely not paying to see whatever it is. No, I wouldn't pay to see it. But um, I am... The, if you ha Literally, go watch <laughs> the trailer if you haven't seen it. Because the dance that she does, I'm just what? like, what in the hell... What, wasn't this a movie that was like announced or something like a while back like I swear I was having like a weird Mandela effect thing where like I was like I've seen this before why is everyone talking about this shit again and then I was like wait this I, movie what, was not out already <laughs> no that's why I'm saying I had like such a weird like out of body experience because I was like this seems so familiar and yet I know I've never seen it before I've at least like maybe when they announced that they were making it they just had like the picture of the fucking weird doll thing cause I've seen yeah, that maybe, like, I don't know. like forever ago and I was just like I just assumed that was a movie that just came and went and like all no. of a sudden it was just like I saw the clip of like the the person with the doll head on like dancing and I was like I, I've, I had a very existential crisis about it where I was like, what the fuck? I've seen this. What's happening? <laughs> She's going to dance her way into my heart, I think. Oh, of course. It looks so weird, too. Movie. Yeah, checked out. Checks out. Oh, she called Jason Blum her bestie, so no thank you. I'll never watch Yikes. this. Hard pass. Wait, the doll did? Yeah, the Twitter account. Trash. Um. All right. What, uh... Kit, what'd you watch this week? Uh, did I watch anything? I was like, you Hold were, on, you were let me, let me so. Google what I watched. <laughs> Google oh, what did Kit watch? <laughs> Katie, what'd you watch while Kit's pulling shit up? Um, I watched. <laughs> wow, my letter box. She's real is quick on it. Not working. Okay, I watch. So I started watching like a bunch of stuff. Um, a bunch of TV shows. So I started The Midnight Club. I started the new Unsolved Mysteries, and I started another show. I can't remember yet. Um, but. At, things that I actually finished was I watched um, a, The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane, which is like a 70s movie that has a little Jodie Foster in it. And I really liked it. But then it bothered me because I was trying to... I'm not great at math, as we all know. But I did some googing and i'm pretty sure that jodie foster is underaged in it and she's definitely naked and i was like i don't really know how i feel about that because i don't know yeah, i so get it was, was the it 70s so probably if her parents were like 
right? I was like, probably if her parents were like, yeah, it's fine, go ahead and do it. Like, at the time, that was normal, but it just was like, she's also in a relationship with a teenager, and so it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But overall, I like, she's amazing, of, of course, in it. Martin Sheen plays, like, a pedophile, um, so he's great in the role. Uh, and it was, like, a pretty solid 70s movie. Um, then I watched a movie called Grim Cuddy. I keep seeing shit about oh, it. I don't know what it is, but the title makes me never so, want to see it. It's from 2022. I already had my, you know, I was just like, I kept seeing the face of it. And I was like, I'm going to go ahead and watch it because the premise is essentially like a, a premise that I really like where it's about a, for I don't know that they call it this in the movie, but it's referencing kind of like a creepypasta. So it's kind of like a Slender Man thing where somebody made it up and then people, it's like a Tulpa situation where people keep talking about it. So it becomes real. Um, but the whole thing, the, the whole like execution, the CG of the thing was really bad, but kind of really bad in a way that was still creepy because he looks, terrible he kind of looks like just the killer if anyone knows what that is um but the but the whole like point of the movie was extremely overstated they just like kept like beating it into you about how like how technology is bad essentially and how uh, whatever i don't know it, so it was fine i don't know that i would recommend it unless you're unless you're really into like that kind of lore type of thing i don't know it was free then i watched dead stream and <laughs> terrible absolutely hated it <laughs> really bad um so we have a I pretty think, good and this is trash so i'm just never watching it i <laughs> think to answer your question that you asked last time about how the main character seemed really obnoxious and then it was like oh well he's obnoxious on purpose he is obnoxious on purpose but i think to a point that it was hard for me to like sit through it that's how obnoxious i thought he was so yeah everything i've seen about it and like hearing what people have said it's like it just uh, just sounds like a movie that's not for me so i just i think I'm no i don't think you would like pass. it um then i watched the forsaken uh which was a really shitty new metal like butt rock movie or whatever yeah 2000 movie which i now that I'm thinking about it more, I've definitely seen it before, but I didn't really remember anything Isn't about it. Cyclops in it? Uh, from no. Movies, or I'm thinking of something else. No, I think you're thinking of something else. Um, and then I watched... Uh, oh, then I watched uh, American Gothic, which is a 1987 movie that um, I don't know that... If I if people really talk about it that much, but it seems kind of like one of the ones people would, and I liked it. It was pretty good. Um, and then I won't talk about it, obviously. But I watched Halloween Ends. I was uh, I was thinking about disturbing behavior. Oh That's yeah, I actually Marsden. have that on my list. I am like going through all of those shitty early two thousands movies that I just like either haven't seen or don't remember that one's on my list so um, i will watch it all right kit what uh what'd you watch all right i'm ready this time <laughs> uh watched uh rejuvenatrix i oh, mean what's that <laughs> it's, it's like uh some old lady <laughs> and like give her some like youth serum basically and they're like oh well it's still experimental so who knows what'll happen if we just keep giving it to her and uh if she goes so long without it she turns into like some freaky zombie lady and starts murdering people it's like not great but it's pretty fun like background movie up on youtube which uh really adds to the appeal i think God bless the people uh, that are fucking like just upload all these movies to YouTube. Yes, heroes. Yes. Uh, oh. watched Halloween ends. <laughs> Whatever. We'll talk about it uh, later in another episode. <laughs> uh, the Oracle. 
pretty decent. Oh, the Roberta uh, Finlay movie? What's that on? Uh, I don't Probably know if that's who it is. It's uh, it, Oh, yeah, it's uh, Shudder. Oh, is it? Shit, I gotta watch that. I like, I have a... Uh, Vinegar Syndrome put out, like, a couple of her, like, hardcore movies that I just, like, randomly bought, and they're really good, and I've been really interested in seeing, like, her horror output and for like a while it just wasn't streaming anywhere i don't think i realized that yeah uh, i think it popped up on shutter i want to say like towards the end of september that's been oh, on my watch list forever yeah, and i was like i'm gonna finally watch this I gotta get on that yeah it's pretty good uh i watched the hidden which whips ass that's one i've been meaning to watch for years and it popped up on criterion oh yeah super sick fucking uh Kyle McLaughlin, like an FBI agent, trying to find uh, this guy who's mm-hmm. going on a murder spree. I was gonna say he's such but... like an underappreciated actor. He's so yeah, good. I agree. I, like I feel like everyone but, uh... only talks about him in like Twin Peaks, but I feel like anything I've ever yeah. seen him in, like even like on like Sex in the City, he's like really good. He's just like a fucking good actor. He's uh, a Donald Love brother. in Grand Theft Auto Three. Uh, I don't know if I played three. I feel like I, the first one I played was. Vice City, maybe. So Donald Love is like the uh, he's supposed to be Donald Trump, and he's like sleazy real estate agent that you run jobs for. (laughs) It's so so good. I had no idea it was Kyle McLaughlin until like a year and a half ago. I was like, what the fuck? Shit blew my mind. Happy birthday one year on Twitter, and it has been the highlight of my life. (laughs) (laughs) What more could you ever need? Yeah. That's really? what I'm saying. And, uh, I watched Plaga Zombie. Oh, how is that? It's pretty, pretty decent. It's, like, uh, worth the buy? Uh, let me get back to you <laughs> after I watch the next <laughs> two. That was... Because on its own, I would say it's worth a watch, but probably not a buy, but, um, I want to watch the next two. Because it, looking by the letterbox <laughs> scores, it looks like they just get better and better so yeah the, like i was uh i was listening to severin because severin does like a podcast for like they that they put out the day they released their you know new movies yeah kind of talk about them and that one sounded like really interesting but i was like oh i don't know this feels like one of those ones where like i'm either gonna love it or i'm gonna buy it and be like why the fuck did i buy this so i just right. like waited on it but i don't know it looked really interesting yeah, I'll I'll get back to you once I watch the other two. Oh yeah, because like I watched the trailer for it and I was like, this looks fucking insane. I have to get this. If I remember, cor- and the first one's pretty good. If I remember correctly, it's something where like, like the like it's like this the trilogy or something, but like they're made like you know a decade apart or something like crazy yeah. like that. Because like the first one's ninety seven. <laughs> it just like takes place like literally where the other movie ended. Let's see, Zona Mutante. Yeah, so 97, 2001, and then 2012. Incredible. Was the last one. Yeah, I will Either way, I want to watch this. I just I haven't I haven't decided if it's worth like buying or not yet. Maybe maybe if they do like, for, like they still have it for like a Black Friday sale. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um all right, I watched a bunch of shit because I had three days off while Caitlin was out of town so I literally one day I think I watched 16 movies <laughs> uh, the combination of insomnia and uh no one else being here uh so I watched or rewatched the 1988 The Blob finally got around yeah. to, like checking out the blue movie the movie's so good I think sometime in November I want to do a movie where we do like a original versus remake of for The Blob because the remake is so good. I like the original a lot too. So, same. Um, I watched Vinegar Syndrome like I think last month. Like whatever the last package I got had a uh, Blu-ray of Edgar Allan Poe's Buried Alive, which was pretty good. I need to rewatch it. It was very like I don't know. It says it's an Edgar Allan Poe movie, but I was not convinced it was Edgar Allan Poe. But it was pretty good. <laughs> um, I watched through the Severin box set of Umberto Lenzo, Carol Baker, uh, Giallo movies. They're all pretty good. Like, um, like not, not, not the best Giallos I've ever seen. Very sort of like, uh, like 
not a lot of deaths in them, but very, like, suspenseful and, like, just a bunch of movies about, like, weird shit happening, driving a woman crazy. So they're pretty good. Mm. Um, I watched a Death Kappa, thanks to Irene. (laughs) <laughs> who, when uh just brought me a blu-ray i'm assuming from a dollar store and it rocks it's uh just like a, a a giant kappa fighting some other monster just destroying shit just basically godzilla with a kappa and it fucking rocks um i watched the devil's wedding night uh it's okay joe damato movie uh i then watched the entire Severin release uh, uh, Severin put out a box set of Andy Milligan movies and I had never seen anything he had done and it's it's a lot of like you know late 60s or like through the 70s and I think a little bit into the 80s um, just real low budget movies where he was just this like dude making like like he has like handful of movies that are just kind of lost cause like whatever like the uh all of the the films just fucking lost or got destroyed so they're like not able to f- you know find copies of them and like he has like a horror movie that's a civil war horror movie but shot on long island and it's shit like that where it's just <laughs> like this dude in the 70s just wanted to make movies and just figured out how to do them in uh long island and they're all interesting i can't say they all necessarily worked for me but pretty sick box set like it's like there was something like 16 movies in it on like eight discs it's pretty stacked i think they just basically anything they could find that was still uh in that they could find like actual prints for they put in it it's it's a it's it's an interesting watch i uh there's there's even shit on there where there's like they just put like um one of the movies there there's only one one real that's dubbed in German. That's like the only thing that anyone has ever had any sort of accountability for. All the rest of it's lost. So they have that on there. It's it's interesting. All the movies are very like mean spirited though. He seems like a dude who like really fucking hated people. <laughs> <coughs> so it's uh it's it's worth checking out if you can find it. I think it might be out of print. Uh and then I started diving into Agfa put out, I think there's two of them now, and there's one more planned in the future of box sets of Doris Wish- Wishman movies, who is another uh, director I was not familiar with, but I think I saw a lot of things where they were talking about, uh, like, whatever it was, the first one was released, how she's, like, the most, like, prolific and kind of, like, respected and one of the few, like, women exploitation movie directors from like the the 70s and i think i've got through three maybe four of the movies so far and they're pretty fun like it's another thing where it's just like someone who just kind of had you know access to whatever materials and like made it work so like one of the ones i watched is or two of the ones i watched are these movies starring a I think she was an exotic dancer named Chesty Morgan, who was this woman with just like <laughs> yeah. huge boobs. Like, like I think they like were something like Double J or something, something ridiculous like that. But she plays like wow. a James Bond type spy, and it's pr- right. it's pretty fun. And there are scenes where like you can tell they're just filming in like someone's living room because there's like wood paneling on the walls and shit, and there's like a window, but it's supposed to be like a strip club. And it's like it's just fun <laughs> shit like that. They're they're pretty fun so far. I'm kind of excited to dig through like the rest of the box sets. And I know there's like, I think there's I think Agfa said there's like one more coming that'll put that'll have like I think finally have like all of her movies out on Blu-ray. So that's uh that's about it. I started I watched a handful of like DC animated stuff again, but that's uh it's for whenever Katie and I continue our comic book bullshit on the patreon uh and i watched skull forest i don't know if we talked about that or not (laughs) we should probably go through it yeah um all right shout outs katie my shout out is that i 
got one of the McBoo pails from McDonald's, and I love it, and it's amazing. <laughs> so if you... The Halloween pails were, like, one of my all-time favorite, like, things they ever did. Aside from the McNuggets, obviously, because those are iconic and amazing. But the pails I liked because you could actually use them. And um, I've been trying to find replace. Like, my mom got rid of all mine, of course. And I've been trying to find replacements at, like, thrift stores and stuff for years. And while these aren't, obviously, as good as the older ones were, they're, like, the closest thing probably I'm going to get. Uh, and so you can get them until Halloween. And so I need to find the other two, but I'm so excited. I love them so much. Uh, what about you, Kit? Uh, negative shout out. Terrifier 2. Sick of fucking hearing about <laughs> it. Get that goddamn Seriously. clown out of my face. I, yeah. Yeah. I, Kit, or not Kit, fucking... <laughs> Shane Shane messaged me earlier and was like, I think like it's like it's playing at the theater near me and he's like, I might just go just to see it and I was like, Shane, it's two and a half hours long. <laughs> Shane, stop. Why I are you doing this to yourself? I mean, a coworker showed me a minute long clip because he knows I hate it, and he's like, I watched this and I'm so confused by what's happening. And it's just like <laughs> the clown I don't like tackles a lady and stabs her in the eye and then he scalps her. And then he stabs right. her in the back a hundred times. And then he grabs her arm and, like, you know when there's, like, a twig on a branch and it doesn't quite snap off and you got to, like, wiggle yeah. it back and forth, like, a dozen times? He does yeah. that with her arm before tearing it off. I was just like, what? What is this? I cannot imagine <laughs> watching this for two and a half hours. That's the thing. Is like, I'll... I'll watch, like, a movie where it's essentially just nothing but, like, just a dude killing people, right? But it's just something about, like, Terrifier. Just, just, it's just a shit to me. Like, I fucking hated the I hate first the clown. one. I hated the shorts it was based off of. Like, I just did not enjoy it. And I can't imagine sitting through two and a half hours of, Mm-mm. like, an, got, an, yeah. an hour, 20 minutes of just, like, a movie of people just getting fucked up like I can handle it. Two and a half hours is just ridiculous. I don't understand it. But uh, I keep seeing articles about how that and Halloween ends are proving that horror is gold at the box office and I'm just like mm. yeah, great. everyone's going to like sure Halloween ends is uh, making a lot of money. It's also sitting at like a 2.3 re- like an average on Letterboxd so um, my shout out. I got two of them. Orange Cassidy finally having a belt. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Love to see it. Second shout out. Okay. Alex Jones owing a bunch of people from Sandy Hook almost a billion dollars. Yeah, love to see it. Um, that idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Katie. What are we doing next week? We're doing the hip hop witch. Just kidding. No, we should. We're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I haven't. I didn't watch it because it's an hour and twenty five minutes. But I found this movie on Tubi that stars Eminem. I don't know if it stars Eminem, but he's in the screenshot, and it's called The Hip Hop Witch. And oh, I no. can't even imagine what it's about. But we're not doing that. We're doing. Uh, wait, what's the wording of it? I'm getting it, it confused with. Um, I don't know. You didn't tell we're doing. Us. <laughs> We're doing, yeah, I did. We're doing Sharks of the Corn. Oh, I didn't know that was like legitimately your pick. That's why I was like, you didn't tell <laughs> yeah. us what we were doing. Yeah, I said Sharks of the Corn for Halloween, and then you said I'm down. And then Kid didn't reply because he never does. So I assumed that meant Kid was also <laughs> down. Um, I think I was trying to get think... Hooch to eat at the time. I was like, sure, corn sharks, that's fine, whatever. Hooch, eat, goddamn you. <laughs> Yeah, corn shark sounds delicious. God, how's this guy made this many movies? This is upsetting. Who corn shark? Yeah, twenty-one films at least. Wow, including Zombarella's House of Horrors, W H O R R O R S. Holy shit! I don't we like gotta that. do the Alien Agenda, Endangered Species. That just looks like a shitty X Files ripoff. Oh wow! I'm in. Um, <laughs> all right, well, Sharks the Corn next week. Solid, uh, 
one point six rating on Letterboxd right now, so we stepped oh, down yeah. from the fucking Skull Forest. I was, I was gonna say it's <laughs> you know worse than the... Skull Forest. <laughs> That's incredible. I saw some of the I saw some of the screenshots from it though, and it's gotta it's gotta at least be fun to talk about. <laughs> we'll see, we'll Maybe we're gonna find out. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Um. Corn shark. All right. If uh, if you would like to support us, you could join our Patreon at patreon.com slash IP Suffer Podcast. We have had a couple episodes this month so far where we do Morbius, Werewolf mm-hmm. by Night so far, and then uh, we'll have an episode on Halloween Ends, and then Katie and I recorded an episode finishing out all the Demons movies where, uh, Surprisingly, Katie enjoyed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can buy merch at our store, Frontier Shop, and you can follow us on Instagram at Ipy Suffer Podcast. Follow Kit at Hidden Kitstery, Hidden Kitstery, and Kitrification of Blood. All one word. All that says it's just that's his at Hidden Kitstery and Kitrification of Blood. <laughs> yeah. See if you can figure that out. Good luck. Uh, follow Katie at Werewolf Face, and you can join Katie's Patreon at patreon.com slash werewolf face. Uh, you can listen to my other podcast, Nate Kate Movie Club, and I was also just on ContraZoom talking about Tusk, so you can listen to that. Finally. Yeah, it was uh, pretty fun. I also got to talk about Freaked and the Oily Maniac, so that was also fun. <laughs> um, all right, Sharks the Corn next week. That's uh, another one I'm not looking forward to because I think it said it was 105 minutes long for some reason. Oh. <laughs> uh, Alright, I hope you never go to a forest of skulls, but why? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's bad. That's fair. <laughs> That's why.